um, I, I, I've been watching, in the corner of my eye, I've been joining the games of Xenio versus Center. This is Center from, I, I think he's in Quantic now. Is that, I, I hope that's, yeah, I think that's, that's accurate. Um, but currently this series is tied one to one. So the winner of this game, and actually game two was, was ridiculously epic, uh, the winner of this game will advance on to the next round. In the top left-hand location, we have the Red Zerg player from Team Liquid. He is Xenio. We saw him 2-0 Gretorp yesterday. I think that was the only game we saw from him. His opponent in the bottom right-hand location, it is the Blue Terran player, Center, from Team Quantic Gaming. TVZ, and again, the winner of this will advance to the next round, so another situation where uh, the winner stays alive and the loser is out of the tournament. And um, to kind of explain what I was seeing in the corner of my eye uh, based on the first two games, Center took the first game. It was relatively convincing. Uh, Hellions weren't involved. Uh, again, I was focusing on another game, so I don't know all the specifics. But uh, game two was actually a, approaching a 40-minute ordeal. Um, Ravens were involved. We had... Uh, base is lost, we had base trades, but uh, Xenio able to eventually take game number two. So these guys have been playing for quite a while. Again, they, they started um, probably around the game two area of when uh, Tyler, uh, Noni, excuse me, and his opponent Mario were going on. So um, a very important game here between Xenio and Center. Indeed, and, and in fact, the winner of this will end up against the winner of Kawaii Rice and Jadong, which is going to be oh, another wow. amazing match. That's a very, I, I'm actually almost all the brackets are stacked here. It's like, yeah. We're getting uh, to that point where it's just like only amazing players are left. Yeah, I mean, Noni will, will match up against Mia pretty soon. Uh, actually, no, he'll match up against Cal... Uh, actually, I don't know how the practicing word. There's too many players still in it. <laughs> we'll get some more updates for you guys pretty soon. Uh, but one-to-one. -one. Uh, center, you know, uh, everyone knows Azenio from yes. Liquid, right? Mm -hmm. um, center, a little bit less known. Uh, but he's very, very, very good Kree Terran. Yes. Um, you know, to get this far in this tournament, I think, is... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, is already going to be representative of that fact, and, and to be one to one with Zinio. Yes. Yeah. So this this is set up to be a great game. Obviously, both of these guys know how important this game is. Uh, so definitely not going to be holding anything back. And again, the map is going to be Belshir Vestige, and we're seeing very macro-oriented openings from both of these guys. Three command centers already on the field here for center and Zinio with already three hatcheries. So it's not like we're seeing any early one base, two base play. Both completely content going up to three bases, really focusing on that economy, on that macro, extending this to the mid game. It definitely looks to be going that way. Uh, Xenio with double spine core. So, you know, when he's taking that third three bases, he knows he's a little more spread out, wants to be sure that every single one of his bases is safe from the Helling play. Uh, and of course, that's because uh, he's not getting the Roaches. A lot of Zerg players have been using Roaches to really beat back the Hellions in Heartless Swarm uh, because the Roaches get a little more value as, as the game goes on than they used to. Uh, because in, in, in Wing Delivery, they, they weren't as useful in the mid-game compositions. In Heart of Swarm, they're a little bit more resilient to the Widow Mines and, than Baneans and Speedians are. So a lot of Zergs say, you know what? I might have some Roaches later on anyway. Want to get a few early to, to stop the Hellions. But Xenio say, nope. Just a new Spine Crawler, yeah. Speedlings. So he can really, really focus on drones, not having to worry about that uh, Roach Worm, which, of course, uh, is basically four less drones as soon as you build that. And, of course, you know, Roaches cost that gas. And if you're trying to yeah. mine more gas and, and spend that gas on Roaches instead of proceeding tech or upgrades, you know, obviously that's not going to be the most efficient way you can do it. So really cool play here from Xenio so far. Meanwhile, center again. Uh, he's on three command centers. There's two engineering bays being added on, starting up the stim upgrade as well, sending some Hellions across the map. He has four in total being headed to this third base. Drones are going to be a little bit vulnerable here, but uh, the drone is just going to juke around that spine crawler, using that as a shield to stay away from those Hellions. And center is going to back away. Look at workers killed. We've got three to two. Nothing too crazy going on there. Income is 48 to 39. So nothing too crazy as far as differences are concerned. But it definitely looks like a bio composition uh, on the way here from our Terran player. While our Zerg player looking like he wants to go for heavy Zergling mainly at this point. I, it definitely does. You know, one thing that's really interesting, their upgrades are pretty much exactly timed out perfectly uh, alongside each other, which isn't something that happens too often, but you can tell how evenly matched these, gar these guys are, and both the focus of their builds. They both did grow faster bases, yep. and then straight to the upgrades, delaying their tech a little bit. We see the starports halfway done, the layers just started, so neither player really trying to get the tech units so fast, but really just wanting to get a great economy, and then also get those upgrades so their, their army will be very strong as the game progresses to the mid and late stages. 
Zergling going to be hanging out at third base, watching out for uh, potential orbital being dropped down there, but he's not quite in position to block that, so we have to see if he <laughs> tries to move that over just to delay that an extra second. Of course, a, a Marine or a Hellion will just go over there and clear it out anyway, but we got some Widow Mines being mixed in here by our Blue Terran player center. Going to be sending those to the top of the map. We'll have to see what he does with those. Might try to position them perhaps outside of this, this mineral line. Um, but uh, definitely going to try to do a little bit of aggression. Command Center is going to drop down, and uh, Zergling going to start attacking at it, but that's not going to die anytime soon. And Xenio is going to be trying to extend that creep center. I guess not going to go in. Just going to create some uh, perimeter with those Widow Mines. Yeah. You know, just already uh, scouting information. You can tell if Xenio is going to launch a significant invasion heading his way or, or something like that. I have a quick update for you guys. So Sasquatch and Hart have both won their losers round eight matches. Oh. Uh, so they're both going to be in losers round nine. Uh, of course, Hart from Axiom, a really top Korean player. Yeah. As well as Sasquatch, one of the, one of the better players from Complexity. I'll definitely keep an eye on that. I'm going to try to bring you as many games as possible. Xenio trying to <laughs> make a, a, a creep line of creeps there, but that's not going to end up happening as the Queen is going to be taken out. Also, oh, the Queen will be Oh, well, the queen gets away. However, scan going down, so a lot of this creep going to get taken out. And Xenio is going to have enough units to defend against any sort of push that's going to happen right now. But uh, against center, just trying to get map control at this point. Definitely looking that way. Uh, Overlord speed coming in from Xenio. But you know, I don't think he's going to use any drop play. It could be just to help him uh, maybe help his overseers against Widow Mines. I think that's the idea is that you can, yeah. you, can, uh, you can run the Overseers away from the battle a little bit faster, get them where you need to be a little bit faster. Uh, it's an upgrade that we almost never saw people really using too much in, in Wings of Liberty, but Heart of the Storm, so you've seen a lot more use, both sometimes against Protoss really early on for scouting, and against Terran, the Overseer, overseer speed is more important now that Widow Mines are such a big factor. Oh, Viking escorting the dropship, making sure that uh, any overlords that spot it will pay with pay with their lives, and the dropship's going into the main. There's nothing there to defend. The Spire is spotted as well. Widowmine is going to be secured there uh, as well. The Marine's going to start chasing down these drones. Lingers need to get involved and start attacking. And they're scared there they of go. it. They hesitated. They Finally didn't fight. turning around and doing that. But she's going to pick up those Marines. However, we got that's, this Widowmine. Oh, and that's when you... Oh, oh the, drones. the drones are clumped up. Wow, great oh, hit for the Widowmine. How many the kills? Six, Six kills on that Widowmine. And, you know, that worked because that's not a Widowmine that Zerg noticed because he saw the Marines, they ran That's the exactly Marines. why the Widowmine was there. Yeah. He was expecting his opponent to right-click on the Minerals, which means they're going to be clumped up, clumped, uh, clumped up, which means that Widowmine can get a lot of kills. A really, really clever ploy there by center. Taking a nice little small victory. I mean, six drones at this point in the game isn't going to, you know, make or break the entire game, but every small victory is nice. All right, we got Drilling Claws being updated here from center realizes the importance of Widowmines as the game goes along. It should be interesting to see how he exactly utilizes those oh! as the game goes along. Nice detonation that was a onto those links. We have a quick Ooh. pause. Hopefully no one's keyboard broke. No, no, it doesn't. Well, he couldn't type PP if his keyboard broke. That's a good um, point. That's the good news. That's a good point. So there's no there's no broken keyboard. Oh, good. no, he could bring up uh, he can bring up those virtual keyboards sometimes with And the you mice. can, like, click. Yeah. But don't you have to, like, alt tab to get to that? Yeah, so you're right. Keyboard, yeah. yeah, he'd be in trouble. Um... Some Korean text there as well. Unsure what's actually going on. Uh, asking a question in Korean, unfortunately. I don't know what it says. I wish yeah. Total Biscuit was here. Yeah, he could translate for us. Translate it. Mm -hmm. Or buy it. Oh. Looks like they're getting ready to go. Oh, there we go. The game is starting back up. <laughs> Whatever happened, it's resolved now. Zeno says go, go in caps. Center says go, go in lowercase. Yeah, we got a drop in the, the main base of Zeno, which might explain. Uh, his cap since he's all across the keyboard trying to deal with this multi prong harassment from center. A lot of jumps going down, a queen getting taken out oh, as well. Massive but Zerg convergence. Are the Widowmines here to defend? I see a few. Let's see how much damage these Lings, Banelings, and Mulets can do. Xenia trying to break his opponent. Decent split up here from center, trying to retreat away from those Banelings, trying to let those uh, those Widowmines do their damage, but Xenia has an oldest here. Oh, the Mutas! The Mutas all got mad, or not all, but a portion of them stayed yep. behind to try to buy time against the Marines. The Mutas do not want to fight Marines. No. Xenia's. Forced to retreat. That was a great defense from center. I think yeah. that went exactly how he wanted it to go. Oh, yeah, and now he's got a command. He needed, you know, the timing was great by Xenu. He was 2 2 right before center's 2 2 finished. Uh, you know, he had a small upgrade window there and he, he tried to seize it, but center's control just too good. Kiting to buy away from Widow Mines, and now center's ahead in supply. Uh, Zeno's got to find a way to hold that fourth base on the right side of the map. If he can do that, he can get back in the game. But uh, he's also got to watch for drops on the left side of the map. So center's going to be working both sides. It's going to be very difficult for Zeno to keep up. 
Yeah, have a drop heading up to that main base location. Once again, this is a location that uh, Center has been going after in all game long. Zeno going to be backing up some, some units to deal with that. Meanwhile, we see Center uh, pushing a force across the map, and these units are still very much alive. The Ling is finally swooping in here to take care of that. The Mutas should be able to kill that medevac unless it decides to ignite those after. No, it is going to fall. But uh, center in, in a great position, but Xenio able to secure this location at the middle right. However, I want to see how many drones he's lost. 24 workers killed A lot there. of drones have been died. Uh, One thing is, he, he's, still, he's been able to replace them, though, and he has yeah. a fourth base. Uh, he's it, upgrading the Enduring Locust upgrade, uh, which is really interesting because uh, Swarm Mosts are getting more and more common in uh, Zergverse Tyrion as a way to deactivate Widow Lines, but often it's just a couple Swarm Hosts. Uh, the in, Enduring Locust means you want to get a few a more. A lot of them. Yeah, and look at that, because eight in production, that's a sizable count. We're really going to use him uh, to supplement his damage output. Yeah, we got another drop at Xenio's main base. Uh, over and over again, center, just trying to abuse this location. One Queen is not going to be enough to deal with that. The Ling's immune is going to try to retreat back here to deal with this meta back. Oh, Picking up the what? units, going straight to the The units went right past it. The Ling's yeah. immune is like, forgot about it. But the medevac, uh, it's actually just not even a drop. So they keep flying to the corner because there's action going on in the center. Yep. A nice push out from center, clearing the creep. Locusts uh, trying to be annoying, but the Marines clearing those up. No widow mines deactivated from the Locust quite yet. So many widow mines pushing there. forward more. All right, oh, drop is eventually going to get taken care of. The widow mines getting pressed way up, killing a lot of drones there. But here come the Locusts, and how is Center going to respond to that? Taking out the hatchery that might have been his goal. Um, it is, but he's losing a lot of Widow Mines. Uh, but the hatchery is really, really important for Xenio. He really wants those four bases. He is going up to Hive. Once he gets Hive, he's going to want to spend a lot of his money on those upgrades. And that's where not having that uh, that fourth base is really going to hit. His production momentarily is going to be slowed down. Center still sending out drop after drop over to his opponent's side of the map. We've got two heading to the main base. One heading to, if not the fourth, perhaps the third base of his opponent, Xenio, while continuing to main pres maintain presence on the map. There's plenty of Widowmines here. Locust trying to clear that. Here comes the drop into the main base. Xenio is there and ready with plenty of Lings and Banelings. Uh, great defense there at the same time. It looks like Center going to be pushing across the right-hand side of the map Ooh. to drop, heading to that third base. There's changes <laughs> there. Fake Marines. They're, they're preventing the Queen from retreating. Oh. So well, they're maybe loyal Marines. Yeah, I don't know. that would be. I guess those are Xenia's changelings. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Center gonna try to engage this location. The Bailey's coming in, getting huge explosions oh. onto these Marines. Oh, man. Center trying to split, but it's a little bit too late. However, able to deny that fourth base once again, which he's gonna be happy with while securing this base on the left hand side of the map. A drop. Uh, gosh, these Marines are distracting me. They are blue on the mini map. They are blue on the mini map. I'm not a liar, Nick. Why would they be blue on the mini map? They should be red. No, but then I know. center would be right. Yeah. <laughs> so Xenio now investing in all those upgrades. He did lose that fourth yet again, but he killed a ton of Marines with those Bane hits. Right now, I think yeah. Xenio is actually uh, happy with the last couple minutes. He's closing the supply gap as well. Is starting to really get uh, investments going for as far as the hive tech is concerned. Clearing up the widow mines. Center's lost a little bit of his momentum, uh, and, and because of that, maybe he's decided to start investing in more command centers, realizing the game is not going to be ended so easily. We've seen an Ultralisk transition of sorts here from Xenia. Nothing but Marines, Marauders, Medivacs, and Widowmines on the field here for Center. So really prioritizing really the bio, big. yeah. The Locusts. Yeah, and he's even getting the second attack upgrade for the range attack, which is a, a really cool thing. Triple Evo Chambers upgrading all three attacks, at, uh, all three Zerg upgrades at once, as well as Ultralisk Carapace. Uh, these drops, though, every location, center just doesn't give up. Uh, Xenio's dealing with it well, though. He, I don't think he's lost too many more drones. He's still at a very high drone count. Uh, oh, but here's the big push out. What Locusts coming to greet it. All right, so Locusts are, are, are going to continue to be a problem here. Um, I feel like Xenio doing a great job with those. But again, this fourth base, Xenio trying to keep it up, but I don't think he has enough to defend it. Oh, it looks like it, the fourth hatch is definitely going to go down if center stays, keeps his focus. One ultra is going forward. That's not going to be enough on its own either. Locus coming from the high ground. A nice little damage output there, but backing away from it. Center keeps the majority of his forces alive. Xenio is forced back. Still with no fourth base, Xenio has got to find a way to get that fourth up. Oh, but the drop's in the main. Center keeps doing this. Center's strike everywhere. on the right, strike on the left, and even strikes down the center with those drops in it back to third. Again on the right side, if he cancels his hatchery again, Zeno will be so frustrated. I, I look at the bank. Center has 2.5k in the bank. dropping now. Yeah. He can't, he can't keep up replacements. I think he's buying off a 
uh, he has to pull his drones so often to deal with these drops, he's having a hard time getting resources. And now, Senator bringing his army together, and oh no, the Swarmos are vulnerable. Here come the Ultras, though, for Xenio. Can this be the ticket back into this game? He needs to have a convincing engagement, and he needs to secure a fourth base, but Senator doing a great job continually denying that from happening. We have some Corruptors being added onto the field, interestingly uh, enough. Now the Infestors as well. Infestors are what's going to allow those Ultras and Locusts to really connect with the Terran army. Unfortunately, because he has had such a hard time getting a fourth base, he's been really gas constrained. It's very difficult for him to really get the Infestor County once, along with the Ultras and the Swarmos. Realizing that he's been gas constrained, has extra minerals. Realizing that Zergreens aren't that useful now that Senator's been able to shut them, uh, shut any counterattacks down. He's starting to power That's through a lot of extra. That's not a good idea, and this is exactly Ooh. what Xenio needs. The Corruptor's going to take down the Metavacs in a second. And uh, again, plenty of units down below to deal with that. Locust again trying to desperately uh, secure this fourth, trying to defend this fourth base. But here comes the rest of our army from center. Lots of Marines and Marauders, but a huge fungal going down onto this bio army. You need to have that follow up damage, though, to actually kill these units, or they're just going to stay alive. The medevacs are a plenty above this bio army and will keep this army alive for a very long time and center continually able to deny this fourth base from happening look at center's marauder production he can produce seven at a time <laughs> so the ultra are going really have a really really tough time dealing with those marauders it's going to come down to massive fungal growth chains but without the gas income xeno's really struggling to keep yeah. his unit count up this is fourth uh, how do you get that fourth up um Center's doing such a good job of spreading the map out. He can try out. to take this one on the left. Yeah. You know, one thing a lot of Zerg players do is they take two bases, and then, you know, whenever they lose one, they can Send just... Send the drones. Yeah, exactly. And then they'll, they'll keep constantly rebuilding them. Uh, but Xenos, has been, he's been too much on the defensive. Now this left side base looks like it might be taken down shortly. Center... Center doesn't know about it. No, he's pulling SCVs. He's pulling SCVs. He doesn't need them. He has he, plenty of orbital commands. He feels he's ahead enough now. Um... Yeah, he wants to transition from a very powerful economy into just getting a really powerful army. Yeah, I mean, he'll have the mules available to kind of equalize the drop of the third base. So many Marauder. Oh, no. Center taking out hatchery after hatchery Two from Xenio. Two more gases that he can't mine from anymore. Oh, such important losses there. Minerals, actually, Xenio's not mining anymore, is he? He's very low. Oh, like long distance Well, mining. not for long, because we have a drop going right oh, to that. Oh, no. That's the last patch you could mine from. Drones be massacred. Center is in retreat through the middle, but I... I it's a, he's okay with this retreat. Yeah, he's got the planetary. There's no way Xenu can actually push forward into that planetary. Meanwhile, he's just destroying. Uh, he Zinu, just killed Zinu's the third. got to go for killer blow right now. Killed the natural. Uh, Zinu has to find a way to to go kill Center, and I don't I don't know if he has what it takes. Center is making units so fast, he's even introducing a lot of ravens. Uh, I don't even think he'll get a chance to utilize them too much. Uh, probably they were there in case Broodords ever entered the field, but Xenu never had the economy to even add this. Yeah, uh, I think the greatest fire was just killed by this Green Marauder squadron, taken out of spawning Well, this is a very cost-efficient drop. It's killed the third. Oh, if it's killed the, the natural. It's killed the main. It's killed the greatest fire spawning pool and the hive. And let's see how many make it out alive. Xenio, Form of poetry this is a position saying. where a lot of players leave out of frustration, but Xenio, knowing that it's game number three, if he loses, this is the lo lower bracket. Yeah. He is going to be eliminated if he loses this map. He's trying everything he can. He knows the Swarmos may be his way into it. He's trying to use Locus as a cost for the trade, but there's too many Metavax. There's so many Metavax that Locus Oh, no, the Infestors! Oh. He can't afford to be losing those. Gosh. Oh, it. one of them... Uh, the, oh, they, they left it for the Seeker missile. I was like, why did the bio not kill it? They're like, okay, let's, yep. let's leave it let's, for that Seeker. Let's let the explosion happen yeah. for the crowd. Uh, um, Xenos well. coming in here. Uh, he's hoping... Oh, no, the Ultra just all turned red, but that's not like red is in rage angry. It's because their Seeker missile locked onto them, forcing them to away. retreat. Yeah, fizzle which fizzle I, away. Yeah. If you, if you get out of the range of the Hunter Seeker, the Hunter Seeker will fizzle away, and it won't uh, actually detonate. But that's allowed the center to clear up some of the creep on that right side of the map when Xenia retreated. Now he's going to push forward again. Xenia looking for some massive fungals. He gets it, but there's no follow-up. Yeah. And the medevac no killing is just too much. Center stayed permanently maxed out. And center's bottom. okay with losing units here, too, to be oh, yeah, I mean, honest. Look at this, look at this bank. Yeah. Uh, he's got five bases. I think he like wants to produce units. His medevacs are actually out of energy now, so he's having a hard. Most of them are anyway. He's having a hard time. He's he's cutting towards the ultras. Yeah, muscling forward. That's confidence. Taking out the Zerg players. Center up 168 to 78 in supply. Only corruptors remain above. Essentially, Senio was able to get a hatchery up somehow oh. during all of this. You know. No, this. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see it. Um, um, especially Center's heading to the left side. He, Center has to just know about the left side base, right? He's gonna go kill it. Well, there's there we the go. GG from Senio. And center 
takes victory in game three, and he will advance on in the WCS America qualifier. Of course, Xenio, unfortunately, uh, will be knocked out of the tournament. Uh, but well played from Xenio. Just, just, yes. just very solid play throughout. It's like... I don't know. That was just great Terran play. I don't. Really, I really don't know how to describe it. Really, center was. I don't want to impressive. compare him to Flash, but that was like, that was, was seemed like impressive. a perfect game for him. Yeah. So. Very yeah, well the, done. the the drop play was really well thought out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just randomly. Oh, let's do some drop play because I, I keep hearing medivacs are good, so I'm yeah. just gonna drop them. No, it was it was always knowing where Xenu's army was and dropping where it wasn't, and, and and then the drop wouldn't just do damage. It would lure the army to a location to make an opening. He what he was doing is he wasn't waiting for his opponent to make mistakes than jumping on him. He was forcing mistakes by constantly poking his opponent uh, to see where the openings were at. And it was really, really nice to see that. Yeah, great play there from center. He'll be advancing on in WCS America qualifiers. Guys, stay tuned. We're well underway on Sunday and we have plenty more matches coming your way. We'll be back after a quick break.